Hi, welcome back to MF Corner. Mrin Agarwal, who's a financial educator and director at FinSafe India, joins in now. And she's going to be talking about some all seasons funds. But Mrin, before that, uh, you know, some of the other issues that investors have is because, you know, whenever we talk about the benefits of mutual, fund, uh, of mutual funds, but there are some issues or, you know, you can say pain points also that remain. Uh, so where is it uh, that you notice that portfolios go wrong? Good afternoon, Samara, and it's lovely to be here today. Um, I think there are just too many funds for investors to choose from, right? I mean, first of all, you need to choose a category, whether you get into a debt fund or you do an equity fund or you do a balance fund. Now, in debt, in debt there are 16 categories. In equity funds, there are eight categories. And then in balance funds, there are so many categories. Within these categories, again, to figure out, like, for example, on the equity side, um, the first dilemma that investors always have is whether we should do active or we should do passive funds. Um, on the international funds, for example, uh, do you choose a broad-based index? Do you choose a more concentrated index? And of course, which geography do you choose? Um, again, uh, NFOs, thematic funds, you know, I mean, there are like so many uh, issues that investors face in just trying to figure out which is the fund that I need to buy because there are too many categories. And while some really good work has been done on categorizing them, the fact still remains that there are too many funds. Now, the second point is that uh, it's very difficult for investors to evaluate funds. They don't know what are the metrics to be used. You know, honestly, even if the metrics like volatility ratios or rolling returns are available, for most investors, it's very, very difficult to actually analyze and figure out how do we go about this whole thing. And that is why when you see investors choosing funds, they tend to fall back upon what's done well in the last one year, right? Um, of course, uh, investors don't know when to exit. And finally, more importantly, during volatile times, what is the sort of action to be taken? So very often I'm asked whether I should hold my investment, should I exit, now if recession is going to come up, what should I do? And interestingly, there was a study from Access Mutual Fund uh, that showed that investor returns in mutual funds, specifically equity funds, lag by 18% as compared to the fund return because of all the um, issues investors face um, maybe while choosing a fund or the decisions related to holding on to the fund. So I think, you know, these while mutual funds have a lot of benefits, I think, you know, a, a basic thing that they need help in is choosing the right fund. Hmm. That's right, actually, Mrin, because, uh, you know, the uh, maximum amount of questions uh, that anybody receives is around, uh, you know, uh, what funds to choose, active, passive, direct, regular. But what are the other, uh, you know, decisions related to mutual funds that investors have questions about or should have questions about? Um, so typically, one of the questions is about whether to do a lump sum or to do an SIP. If you're doing an SIP, what date to do the SIP on? Should one consider new funds that are coming up? Of course, number of funds in the portfolio, right? People are never sure. Um, and typically what is seen is that they keep adding on funds in the portfolio. They don't consolidate it, right? So you, it's very common to see people having like 10 to 15 equity funds in their portfolio. The biggest challenge that investors face is when funds are underperforming. So how long do you track a fund? And most people actually lose patience by three to six months. How long do you track an underperforming fund before you decide to take action? And how do you actually track this underperformance, right? Because again, most investors tend to do it uh, based on absolute performance, whereas ideally it should be based on relative performance. And uh, again, another decision question that I get asked very often is that, should I exit when the fund has given a good return? Right. So a lot of investors kind of related to stock investing, whereas mutual fund investing is very different. OK. And, you know, when these questions are asked, Mrin, uh, what is your advice or what's your recommendation? So I would say between lump sum and SIP, I mean, if your holding period is long term, it is more than 15 years, then honestly, lump sum is also fine. And I think there's enough data to prove that it doesn't really matter which date you do the SIP on. 
Um, again, uh, you know, I do not really prefer NFOs because I think there are enough funds with 20 year track record that are available today uh, that, you know, you can look at rather than looking at a new fund offer. And of course, it always makes sense to have four to five funds in the portfolio, uh, which you are holding for the long term. Um, in terms of exit and underperformance, I would say exit a fund only when uh, it's close to your goal or if you have a requirement or it's underperforming. And on the underperformance aspect, you know, you need to give a fund at least 12 to 18 months before you really decide to take action on the fund. Mm. But, you know, given the amount of information that is available now and the number of funds in the market themselves, um, you know, this analysis of fund selection is always very difficult, right? So now let's get to uh, the part we've been waiting for, which is, you know, which funds can investors choose? What are these all seasons funds uh, that work for any kind of goal? So, of course, uh, point number one, you always need to choose a fund based on your financial goal and the risk-taking ability. Uh, but just in each category of funds, I have found that in the debt category, the ultra short duration funds work for less, uh, work well for periods less than three years. And when you're looking at periods above three years, then the short duration funds um, work out better on risk adjusted returns because what you see in these funds is that the volatility compared to a corporate bond or a credit risk or even a guilt fund uh, the volatility in these funds is much lower. So a lot of times when you get into debt funds, which are very highly volatile, like for example, a guilt fund, the investor will not have the propensity to stay on, right? They're going to be like really worried as to why is my debt fund being so volatile. So I would always suggest do the short-term debt fund um, if uh, for periods above three years. I prefer it compared to the dynamic bond fund or any of the other funds. On the equity side, of course, in your previous discussion, you were talking about uh, flexi cap funds, and I'm a big fan of flexi cap funds because you know that's where fund managers can uh, take allocations in their high conviction uh, options. And of course, uh, other than flexi cap, uh, I think you know as far as the large cap space is concerned, it's good to have any Nifty 50 index fund in your portfolio with a flexi cap. And certainly, I do see that in the actively managed mid cap space, there are funds that are uh, consistently outperforming the benchmark. So if you're able to identify those, you know, I, I do think a portfolio of um, the index, the flexi cap and the mid cap is a great equity portfolio to have. And you really don't need anything else. You know, these three funds itself are good on the equity side. For investors who are very conservative or who are slightly more conservative and want to take the balance route, um, you do have both the balance funds, that's the aggressive hybrid fund, and you also have the balance advantage fund or the dynamic asset allocation fund. Now, I like the dynamic asset allocation funds, although they will give you a lower return, and that's because they do the regular profit booking for the client. So I, I kind of prefer those funds over the aggressive hybrid equity fund. So to sum up, I will say ultra short term, short duration debt fund, um, the in index fund, which is the Nifty 50 index fund, flexi cap fund, mid cap fund, and dynamic asset allocation fund. Okay, but Mrin, can you also classify these according to the uh, you know duration or tenure uh, of the goal? Yeah, so you know it's very important because obviously, if your holding period is only two years, you can obviously not look at an equity fund. So you know while flexi cap is a great category to have, you obviously cannot look at it if your goal period is only two years, right? So I think uh, I, I have shared a grid um, uh, when you're looking at periods of less than three years then uh, clearly if you are a really conservative investor, stay with the ultra short duration debt fund. And if you're an aggressive investor, uh, I mean, I, honestly, for all levels of investors for periods less than three years, it is the ultra short duration debt fund. Um, certainly for periods of three to five years, you can look at the short duration debt funds. And when you're looking at longer term periods, which is five to seven years, uh, a conservative investor can look at a short duration debt fund Whereas a moderate investor could look at a, a balanced advantage fund and an aggressive investor can actually look at a balanced fund. And of course, when you're looking at long term, again, if you're very conservative, I still believe that you should have some equity. So if you're very conservative, still look at the balanced advantage fund. And again, moderate investor, look at index, 
and maybe flexi cap and if you're aggressive i would say and you have a long term holding horizon do look at the small cap funds because the small cap category has a huge outperformance over the index okay i wish we could have shown that plate with the aggressive risk profile as well but nevertheless mrin thanks very much for joining in and for explaining explaining this all seasons funds